Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. But I've mastered that style. It's like the five deadly venoms. So all he had to do was get next to a nigga like that. He could destroy it. Believe in that. For real. We plan to take the same strategy we use with Death Row West. Mind over matter. Taking all our weaknesses and making it into our strength. That all these people talk about an East Coast, West Coast war. They like the Judas was to Jesus. They only here to cause confusion. We here to bring money and to bring change. They here to cause confusion. All these weak rappers, Nas, all these suckers, they battling off of East and West like this is a game. This ain't no game. If this was chess, we'd be yelling checkmate three years ago because we've been beat these It's not a game. Gennady Golovkin, his various options, and Canelo. Stay tuned. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing if you want to become part of the gang gang. Notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working. Now, I'm just going to give you guys videos. You know, Ego Army, we killing with the content, putting out a lot of stuff. And people are still talking about Triple G versus Mandatories, Charlo, Dervinchenko, Canelo, Canelo, Billy Joe Saunders. So, I want to do an updated video, kind of recapping giving my truest thoughts as of right now we're a day away from june it's going to be a surgical summer now i'm going to consolidate recap all that good stuff in this video regarding canelo moving on from triple g triple g canelo 2 and that whole nine a lot of people still have questions i've said it but it might be spread out on a live stream on video a video b so i'm going to give you an updated video containing this whole situation like we've done in the past and giving my thoughts listen a lot of people are misconstruing what i've said what i've said i've been very transparent and if you need clarification please stay tuned to this particular video triple g is a good fighter he is a champion with all of the belts except for the wbo belt with billy joe saunders he's coming off a fight with vanis Matarosin, a 154 pounder coming off a two-year layoff off the couch um, and coming off of a loss he knocked him out did we had to do he saved the date he did whatever numbers he did on hbo and at the stub hub i was live i was at the fight and he got a knockout right the problem is his team is now in my opinion stalling negotiations and you got to get to the root cause of it and that's what i'm here to discuss team triple g in the first canelo fight being the b-side acknowledging they're the b-side at first you gotta you have to you have to play the game just listen to the game the game of business the art of business right and that's what we're going to talk about in this video canelo's the a-side he knows it so he's going to use his advantages in negotiations his team golden boy eric gomez oscar de la hoya that's what's going to happen just because we know he's the a-side with these stats etc so my thing is triple g's team has to prepare for that they have to be ready for that and stand up for what they feel their fighter, their side, their team is worthy of. And that's the problem. In the first Canelo Triple G fight, in order to make it happen, which was a career high payday for Golovkin, he took a, a split of 70-30 in favor of Canelo. Obviously, the A-side Canelo got the 70, lion's share of the money. He cashed out. De La Hoya saying he made like... 40 million or 30 million something crazy because it was a lucrative fight it set a live gate record top five right maybe even top three right so live gate records people tune in a million plus pay-per-views it was a successful lucrative event they sold merchandise etc Golovkin took 30 percent his standpoint is and hey, no i feel like beat canelo a lot of people agree with me some people don't but a lot of people do agree that Golovkin won the first fight right then when it came to the rematch, which was decided for in May, Team Triple G, they got a little bit of a boost. They said, based on the tough first fight, uh, it ending in a draw and being controversial, so they negotiated. 
This particular time, they negotiated a 65-35% split. The fight was announced. Same venue, same city, same location. Through no fault of Triple G's or his side, Canelo has something in his system that isn't supposed to be in his system. Clenbuterol. Clenbuterol is a respiratory substance that they use for cattle. Canelo claims it was tainted meat while he was visiting Mexico, where he's from. And long story short, the fight fell apart after that. No fault of Golovkin's. Golovkin didn't fail any VADA test. He didn't um, cheat or anything, right? Weeks after this announcement, mind you, Canelo had not been suspended publicly from Nevada State Athletic Commission. So people were still like, oh, the fight's in limbo, but it could still happen. Triple G and Abel did an interview absolutely tearing Canelo, right? And some people would say rightfully so. But I told you right then and there, and this is the great thing about new media. You guys could go visit these old videos where I said this stuff. It's all on YouTube. They tore him down. You could say they had a standpoint, whatever. But in my opinion, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Because in doing so, in opening your mouth on an already sensitive subject, you created outrage, even more so than what was already previously the case. So you can say whatever you want, but Triple G would have got, most likely in my opinion, he would have gotten that bag and probably still got the fight had, not, had that not happened, just because the mere fact that the fight hadn't been canceled, tickets weren't refunded, um, Nevada State Athletic Commission didn't say anything about Canelo being suspended, nothing. But when they said Canelo has been cheating since the first fight and they have picture proof from doctors and Abel says that he was in the dressing room of Canelo and Vegas is bending the rules for Canelo and he's creating a cast and he's layering his raps, all of these things combined added so much presence, so much pressure so many sets of eyes from really the public you know what i mean onto the situation it became unbearable and if the nevada state athletic commission did nothing at this point then it would clearly look like they're on the side of the canelo you know what i mean because how can you not where you have proof you're saying that he was cheating in the first fight then he failed two drug tests in the second fight which is cheating you know what i mean having something in your system is not supposed to be there and then on top of that, Abel saying you're cheating with your hand wraps and illegally wrapping your, your hands in a method in which it gives you um, a harder cast-like Thanos glove for more punishment, right? All these things considered, Nevada State Athletic Commission had to do something. Immediately after, and I would say immediately, it was a couple of days after, all of a sudden Canelo gets a temporary suspension from the Nevada State Athletic Commission. And then everything falls apart. Tickets get refunded. I start talking to my people from the Box Fan Expo because I was helping them uh, promote the event. And they're saying, I don't know, because they were trying to do the fight, the Box Fan Expo to coincide with this big lucrative fight, right? And they're like, I don't know if it's going to go down. I talked to my people and it's looking like it might get canceled, right? So we all held on. Then the inevitable happened. Tickets were refunded. Canelo withdrew from the fight. And that's where it sits. Golovkin saved the date, fought Vanas Matarosa in the fight. Most people thought he, that he would win, right? And Canelo's suspended until mid-August. That's where we're at. Now, Canelo could fight Golovkin, but Golovkin's team in September, Canelo will be free from suspension in September, the second quote-unquote Mexican date. Oscar says with this delay of Canelo being suspended, he wants them to fight in September and December. But the, the problem is now Triple G's team has been vocal and is highly publicized, Tom Loeffler and stuff, that he talked to Triple G personally and Triple G says, man, after all I've been through, I'm the champ. I'm, I'm, I'm not comfortable getting 35% anymore, right? And that's where we're at. De La Hoya and Golden Boy, Eric Gomez, they're saying that these new demands that weren't announced for five to six weeks from that side, from the Triple G side, are ludicrous, ridiculous. No way in hell is Triple G's team going to get that. So if you're hell bent on getting 50-50 with Canelo, then you're going to miss out on this train because we're going to explore other options. Options like Saunders, Charlo, Jacobs, Spike O'Sullivan, or Lemieux. They're saying, Canelo, we have the star. Even though he failed the drug test, he's proven that he's clean, doing year-round testing right he did a hair follicle test and that came out that checked out so he's still a star and he's still the a side 
So they're telling Team Golovkin that tough titty. You want the fight? Accept the same terms. And that's where it sits. Now, my standpoint on this whole thing, I've said it and I'm going to say it so we're crystal clear. I do not care how much Canelo is getting. I don't care how much Golovkin is getting because neither Oscar De La Hoya or Tom Loeffler is going to cut me in on that particular deal. I make my own money and I make it through my channel. It has nothing to do with the percentages or the percentiles that they negotiate for their fight. So I really could care less. But as a spectator and a fan of the sport and as a person who thinks the second fight needs to happen as a, as a justice to provide closure for the boxing fans, I will say my thoughts. And my thoughts are Team Triple G is holding up this whole process because they agreed to 65-35. And I understand it may pain you. I understand it might not be fair. I'm not even rebuttaling that. But what I am saying is business is not fair. I'll give you some examples. Is it fair that Adrian Broner with three losses, if he were to fight Terrence Crawford with no losses, who some people have on the pound for pound list, right? And someone who just unified and became undisputed at 140. If Terrence Crawford, who's a fighter that I really respect, were to fight Broner, Crawford would be the B-side in that promotion. Not because of uh, Crawford has done less or because not because he became undisputed. It's just the reality of the situation. Broner has a mouthpiece. He puts, his, puts asses in the seats. He has certain stats. He's linked to other popular fighters like Floyd. And you know what I mean? People know him. So is that fair? If you look at it, you would easily say no. Why wouldn't Crawford, the guy who has the prestigious unblemished resume and all the skill in the world why would he not get more money but once again life is not fair boxing is not fair right that you can't make that make sense right there's a lot of things like stoppages that are fair I, I think Carlos Tackham got prematurely stopped in the AJ fight is that fair that the ref didn't give him the benefit of the doubt and see if he, he had already been hurt in the fight. See if he can go the 12 with Joshua. No, it's not fair. Joshua's the A-side, and that's the decision he made. Is it fair that uh, Andy Joshua fought Joseph Parker, the shorter man, his best chance of beating Joshua, and his best work was coming from when he was getting active on the inside. And every time they were fighting on the inside, the Italian referee was breaking the action, lulling the action, slowing the pace, which allows Joshua to gain more space and real estate and range. Is that fair? No, but it's the reality that you deal with. End of story. Now, when it comes to Gennady Golovkin, the only people that I see say he's he should get 50-50, they're looking at it from a morality standpoint, a, a, a standpoint of fairness. But once again, since when the fuck has boxing been fair, right? People were anointing Lomachenko when he had like eight, nine, ten fights, number one pound for pound. Is that fair to all the other people like Pacquiao's and, and whatnot, whoever done more? You know, is it fair to Floyd Mayweather that they're there that ESPN is telling us that um, Floyd Mayweather, 20 years in history, robbed in the Olympics, undefeated, 50 and 0, would possibly get beat by Lomachenko when we still have more to see from Lomachenko? You know what I mean? Is that fair? No. But again, this is the world we live in. So it's not about fairness. It's about the reality of the situation. And, and to me, we know Triple G is not getting 50-50. Now, I understand, and I told you guys in my past video, I'm not mad at his side for reaching out and asking. It doesn't hurt to ask. You know the saying? It doesn't hurt to ask. But you asked, Golden Boy responded, and now that's where you're stuck at. So maybe he can negotiate and get 40%. I definitely think he's not getting 50-50. Maybe he can get 42%. Maybe he can get 43, 45%. I don't know. That's up to them. But it would be a shame if Golovkin now gets cold feet on a deal he was willing to take in May that is still offered to him within a time limit because if they're not fighting Golovkin, they're right on the cusp of needing to know and reaching out to the other people for Canelo um, and starting to promote that fight for Canelo's big comeback, right? 
So it would be shame if this fight falls apart. So yes, that's why me personally, I think Golovkin is at fault because ultimately, to beat to, so I don't beat around the bush. What this stems from is the business practices, the decision making, and the negotiating of Team Triple G's side, because that's the only reason you would have accepted that deal. This sounds like to me, you accepted sixty five thirty five. And you weren't really content with that. You were just going to go with it. You know, it's still more money than you can get with anyone else. And then you decided on that. But now that you have this avenue out because Canelo's clearly suspended. Now you're trying to backtrack and get more money because ultimately you took a deal that you didn't want. But see, the thing is, when you're dealing with A sides and when you're dealing with businesses, you fucked up by locking yourself into that you know what i mean that's why you got to do like every every big purchase that i make like camera equipment computers best believe i do my research because i want to eliminate as many possible um factors as i can that would have me dissatisfied by making this like my imac cost a pretty penny i could get a much cheaper pc computer but i've had imac for over a decade i've had apple products so i wanted to keep it in, in the family so looking at the difference because i had like an old 2009 2010 imac that had run its course and i was looking to upgrade last year or a year and a half ago i did my research to see the differences between the new macs and then my old imac how how significant would be would would the difference be you know what I mean? So that's really what it boils down to. Triple G's team, ultimately, it sounds like, should have never agreed to 6535 because that's not what they feel they were worth. And now that they have this this little um, lull or break because Canelo has been suspended, now they're trying to get what they feel they were worth. But again, in business, before you lock in, you should have there should have never been an announcement for a second fight if you took a deal that you didn't want to take. That's the bottom line. And that's what it sounds like. And that's why it sounds like Triple G's team has cold feet. So in my opinion, from a business perspective, you did this. You made your bed, now lie in it. You told Golden Boy, who you know they're not going to cut you any corners, cut you any slack, cut you any breaks. You told them you would take 35. Now they're trying to hold you to that. You know what I mean? So you're, you're in essence giving Canelo and his team a way out because now they're holding you to something you agreed to which is your fault because you should have never agreed to it because if you look at it what has changed Golovkin had the same amount of belts in the first fight that he had when the second fight was announced that he will have in September if they fight so the belts you already knew he was a champion with all the belts and you still negotiated 30 percent and 35 percent so whose fault is that you get what I'm saying not much has really changed the only thing that's really changed is Canelo failed a drug test which you still want to fight him you still want to fight Mr. Failed Drug Test so you can't say oh I deserve more money because he failed drug test because you still want to fight the guy so if you think he's cheating then take um take the plunge by not saying you know what I don't want to fight a cheater you know what I mean don't fight him then but you can't have your cake and eat it too plus whether you like it or not he's doing all he can to try to clean up his image by doing year-round testing and doing a hair follicle test so you can't condemn a guy and say oh he's a cheater so i deserve more money why do you want to fight the cheater so either way you're kind of trapped you get what i'm saying and the only other difference is that you knocked out bonus Matarosa, which was expected there was not really many people that were anticipating bonus Matarosa to survive 12 rounds with the lovekin with all things considered so that doesn't give you any type of leverage, any type, and to me, any type of A-side leverage. So now Golden Boy got you by the balls. And this goes deeper than that. There's other things where I told you guys in the past, Team Triple G should have been their own man and own team and been like, fuck Canelo a long time ago and went their own route, try to be undisputed. And then you wouldn't be worried about that. Because now if you beat Billy Joe Saunders, like after Jacobs and you fought Billy Joe Saunders, Canelo would have nowhere else to run but to fight you because that's the fight everyone wanted to see in general and you have all the belts. So if, if Canelo wants to duplicate what he did at 54, he's going to have to come see you. You know what I mean? Because you would then hold all the keys. You would be Thanos and have all of the Infinity Stones. But you let Golden Boy punk you 
and say, hey, if you fight Billy Joe Saunders, we can't promote the Canelo fight. And as a result, you won't be able to fight Canelo. Man, oh well. Because either way, you could have strong-armed Canelo because you would have backed him to a corner. Beat Billy Joe Saunders, become undisputed, and in doing that, Canelo would have nowhere to turn to. So even though they said they're not going to give you the fight, it would look extremely bad on Golden Boy and on Canelo if you had all the belts at middleweight, you have been chasing him down for two years, and he's fighting all these fights around you and not fighting you. That would have made Canelo look bad. So these are the decision making that Tom Loeffler, K2, and Team Triple G chose. So this is where they're at. And to me, they haven't played the game of chess like Golden Boy is playing it. They know their position. They know their power. They know what Canelo's worth is. You know what I mean? That's why they're saying 50-50, hell no. Because they know that's the last remaining major cash cow that they have. You know what I mean? So they're not budging. They know their value. They know their fighter's self-worth. They know what Canelo can do outside of Golovkin. Right? But it was Team Triple G that negotiated all this other stuff that ultimately sounds like they weren't content with. Because if they were content with it, then why are you trying to get a different amount of money than you were four or five months ago when you accepted the fight? When not much has changed. Point proven, I rest my case. So once again, this is a Triple G situation. And I could go deeper. I could, I could spend another 10 minutes talking about it, but I'm not going to because I'm going to finish this finals. But... Little stuff now, you're in a predicament where other people are, are gunning for your spot. Charlo, Dervinchenko, Jacobs. These guys are all your mandatories. Demetrius, Andre, they they all want fights and they they want what they've uh, been ranked for. Mandatory spots and um, mandatory fights. They want you to fulfill that. So now you're running the risk of being further removed from Undisputed if you get stripped by not fighting some of these guys. So either way, this is putting Triple G side in a bad predicament. Because now if you take with all things, the WBC said if you don't fight Canelo, you gotta fight Charlo. Or you'll pretty much be stripped because that's the rules. And they knew this. So now if you take the deal that you don't wanna take, that you've put up a, a stink about, the 35%, then it's gonna look like you took 35, a deal you didn't want to, to make that money bag with Canelo because you didn't want to make less money and have to fight a monster like Charlo. So it's going to be interesting to see what Team Triple G decides, but that's a simple lesson in the art of business, the art of negotiating, the art of haggling. That's why you always get what you're worth. That's why when you see people who ain't never owned a business, never had an LLC, nothing business related, who are saying, Wilder, oh, take a bullshit 12.5 million versus Joshua and go to the UK to fight him with no pay-per-view backing. When you see people saying stuff like that, that's why Wilder's team said, no, nah, bro, don't take that because this fight's worth more than that. And we know your value. And you're a fool if you take that because this is a lucrative fight and you're gonna have Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua stacking up all this cake on the back end on your behalf while you stuck with this number. But Team Triple G, the way they're negotiating, they just took whatever deal and they've been at Golden Boy's mercy, and now they want someone to show them mercy. But again, this is business. It's not about what's fair. It's about what they can do, being in a position of power, etc. And the last thing I would say, which I've said in the past, is just look at it from a business perspective, which is cutthroat, keep in mind. Golden Boy, their last remaining real prize pupil, cash cow, whatever you want to call them, money man, is Canelo, right? Ryan Garcia, he's not, you know what I mean, he's not really up there in terms of like he's making all of this crazy money like Canelo is for the for the company. He just had a tough fight with Jason Velez and he, you know what I mean, he's a kid trying to earn his stripes or whatever. He's not doing pay-per-views and stuff like Canelo. So literally they have no one that's a pay-per-view star. Not David Lemieux, not none of those people are pay-per-view right now ready-made stars like Canelo. So why would they want to risk their fighter not well not even risk why would they want to give you more money you know what I'm saying? and I, I said this before why would they give you more money especially when you're talking shit you're calling them cheaters you're saying they're using illegal hand wraps you're, you're further staining their image if nothing else and now you want them to show you mercy and do what's right and do what's fair and give you more money when you already agreed to something and they can hold you to that you know what I'm saying it's like if I go to, 
you know how if you this is see i'm the king of analogy so hopefully you guys can vibe with this analogy and then i'm done so i can watch this final if you go to a store and they have a listed price and the SKU and the upc matches that listed price let's say it's a ceiling fan at lowe's right and that upc and the description on that tag matches the product that's right above it that's stacked four deep or eight deep or whatever a ceiling fan then lowe's has to honor that price because it's not it's not the customer consumer's fault that you didn't update your signage and as a result you have to give this discount because this ceiling fan was on sale last weekend but it's no longer on sale and you didn't change your signs right now let's say the ceiling fan is no longer on sale and it's 399 but when it was on sale it was only $99 that's a $300 discount that they're gonna have to take right in addition let's say the associate who was helping you was being an asshole so now you have lows by the balls so to speak because they have to give you a product that you have to do a manual override and a manual discount for it and take $300 off, which is gonna hurt their store. Sales work differently because corporate wide, I used to work at Lowe's, FYI. Um, corporate wide, that price point is uniform across. It's in their Sunday ad or whatever. So your store doesn't take a hit, but your store will take a hit if that item is no longer on sale and you have to honor a sale price because you didn't update your signage. That's where it starts coming from your bottom line as a store. So why would the if i'm the consumer and the associate was being an asshole plus i i got them by the balls because they didn't update their signage and now they got to give me a 300 i might buy two of those ceiling fans just to be an asshole just because it's an incredible price that it's not supposed to be and they were being an asshole and i need a ceiling fan. you know what i mean same thing with golden boy golden boy they have you in a situation you've been bashing their fighter saying how he's a cheat his hand wraps are cheating all this stuff throwing his name further in the mud and now you want them to give you more money they, you want a better deal more equitable split good luck let me know what you guys think but triple g is going to be interesting to see what he decides next make sure you smash the like button as always hate comment and subscribe to next videos ego center so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel you can show your appreciation by going to the paypal donate button or the youtube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video much more to come thank you guys for your support boxing ego the future of boxing